Well, I see that my special pliers have done a runner. So I'll use my second best method of holding this, which is to use these crimp lug pliers. That screw is a bit reluctant. Now, now where are I? There's a spring on there which I like to keep the washer and the button can go into the cleaner. Remove the screw from the top of the shaft here. That drives the film sprocket from the sprocket shaft. There's our sprocket shaft. Here's the sprocket. guide bush for the film advance and the clutch. I'll split the clutch. It's three components. Back to the base of the camera. I'll unhook that spring from the rewind button catch. That catch's job is to hold the rewind button clicked in until such stage as you move the film advance lever, which releases the button and lets everything go back to normal. That spring up to one side, there's our lever. Three screws hold the guide bush on the bottom of the film advance shaft. Sometimes they'll be loose. These ones aren't. And I'll just recover those three screws. This is very sticky with old grease. They can get so sticky with grease that they don't even want to return, or certainly they don't want to return to the rest position. Here's our take up spool. I'll just recover that metal bush from the base of it. The metal bush can go through the cleaner. Okay, so the screw here on the top of the release lever, I'll recover that and its spring. And remove the release lever from the camera. I want the spring off the release lever because it's likely to get damaged in the cleaning process otherwise. So I've got to get this off that boss put that carefully to one side that leaves our lock lever here that's job is to hold the or lock the film advance when you get to frame number one Yeah, now tripod socket, I want that off. The screws on the tripod socket are often loose. This one, unusually, they're tight. They're often loose because when people are doing up the screws on their tripod, they can get a bit enthusiastic. can end up uh, distorting the whole mount on the bottom of the camera in an attempt to get the camera to sit firmly. Okay, so I've got this body pretty much as stripped down as much as I want. I'll recover the mirror before I do any cleaning and 
I'm contemplating whether to remove the leatherette on the back of the camera. I only see one Zeiss bump there. It just depends whether that's an early sign of corrosion all the way across the back of the camera, which is quite common. So I'll get ready to recover this mirror. I'll see if that mirror will lift on its tray. Let's get our match a toothpick under there and there. And see if it'll slide forward. It'll be very gentle doing this because these clips that are holding that mirror down in place. Um, it's just, they're just a spring really and if you overdo it and stress them it won't go well. Okay that's all moving now. I'm just pulling that mirror forward. I can get it by the edge now. Right, and that I'm going to very carefully put that down on a piece of tissue out of harm's way. My first task here now I've got that mirror out safely is just to clean the body up, ready for reassembly. I'll have to look at the camera back here and decide whether the leatherette is loose uh, and whether I can lift it off safely. I'm just running a pair of tweezers down the back there. It's often loose at that point and I can judge. I've got to get it off completely. There's no halfway measure with this. To do anything useful it's got to come off completely. Once I get around this this edge, it's usually easier to get the leatherette off. But it's at that edge, anywhere there's a fold, leatherette gets quite stiff. It's often stuck particularly well, and consequently is, is vulnerable to damage. That, that appears to be coming off quite well. This leatherette, of course, when it was new, would have been very flexible. It's not very flexible now, which means that you can't just peel it off. You have to be very cautious of doing what I'm doing now, which is lifting it to try and get under it. You have to be very cautious about that. Yeah, I can see this sort of powdery stuff coming off with my scalpel. Now that will be corrosion products from the back of the aluminium door. This really doesn't want to slide under there. I'm going to put a drop of naphtha on here that acts as a lubricant allows the scalpel to slide under there easier. So I'll put a drop on my scalpel blade. This is the flatter part of the leatherette and this is often easier to lift. Yeah, 
have to be pretty uh, judicious with using anything in the way of a solvent near leatherette because of course some will be more vulnerable than others Okay, we're just about down to the other corner now. Now I'm glad I did lift this leather at them, you know, looking under here, it's not very pretty. See if I can get under the edge of that with my tweezers. No, it doesn't want to go. I'm using the scalpel here as a lever more than anything else. That's it. That's my leather head off. All of that is, well you can see that crusty rubbish, that's um, broken down adhesive. Uh, here, corrosion. That's that big Zeiss bump that we that had telegraphed through to the front of the leather head. So the leather heads I'll put aside and they'll be cleaned after the body. That'll be virtually the last thing to go back on the camera. This. Now this stuff here on the back, it, it's an odd material. It's often quite waxy. And I've found the best way to get rid of this is to scrape it with the back edge of my scalpel. Not the sharp edge at the front, but the back edge. And the stuff typically scrapes right away. Once it's virtually all clean then I can get on with some solvent to remove any remaining residue but I don't use solvent to start off with you just end up in a mess. You end up using ridiculous amounts of solvent trying to get rid of this stuff. And all this is done to prepare the surface so that when I come to put the leatherette back on we have a clean, dry, dust and grease free surface and the leatherettes will stick back well. This is a bit of a messy process. I've got to work through this. Do the camera back, both sides of the front and the base of the camera. Well it's about 40 minutes later now and you can see that I've got the body all clean, free from all the grease and dirt, adhesive, scraps of leatherette, corrosion and so forth. So that's all ready to be reassembled. Of course I've got to deal with my leatherettes yet because they need a fair bit of treatment too. So what I'll do be doing with these is basically scraping the back of them to remove this deposit which is much the same as was on the camera. It's a bit waxy, um, some hard lumps I want all of that off. You can see where the corrosion was at that point there, that whiter patch. I want all of that rubbish out of there. 
and then the leatherettes will have to be wiped down with some naphtha to remove this greasy remains of the adhesive or finger oils or whatever it is that's soaked into the leatherette because that will prevent the leatherette from gluing properly if you leave, left all that rubbish in there these leatherettes are in good condition they're fairly flexible they're quite robust that's not always the case uh, sometimes they're very dry and fragile and you have to modify your techniques accordingly because if you get too aggressive with your scraping and the leatherette is very fragile you'll end up breaking it it'll shatter you'll end up pulling pieces away and that can be very very difficult to recover from okay well that's looking pretty good I'm just going to wipe that down with some naphtha you can see there's a bit of dirt and rubbish coming off there until I've got that leatherette completely clean then I'll put that aside because I won't be needing that until I'm closing this camera up or until the camera is completely otherwise closed up really and that is most certainly not going to be today maybe tomorrow maybe next week that's pretty good there's quite a pronounced mark on the back there I think that was probably from a camera case or something like that okay well that leatherette's good I think I can get that mark off No, it looks like it's embossed in there. Okay, so that leatherette's good. I've just got to do the sides and the base leatherette in the same fashion. And uh, get my parts back from the ultrasonic cleaner prior to reassembly. Well, I'm ready to start reassembling this camera body. So where will I start? I will start, start here, because otherwise if I bang this on the table the back will pop open so if I get the tripod socket in there that will save that little nuisance from bothering me so I'll put that little bush in the bottom there that's the guide for your film cassettes the base of your film cassette sits into that little moulded well these three screws hold the tripod socket in place if you're doing this job it would pay you to take great care to note which screws came from where I've done so many of them I don't bother with that I can just assemble the camera from a random pile of parts who was I before I was so rudely interrupted oh you're putting the tripod socket on three screws make sure they're nice and tight that's all done I think the uh, rewind can go on next so I'm putting some synthetic grease into the bush this has this little brass leaf spring arrangement in it which acts as a detent to uh, stop
stop the chair flopping about. And there are two countersunk head screws that hold this to the body. And usually best practice for anything you're putting on that's got multiple screws is get all the screws fitted before you tighten anything up. Once they're all in place you can tighten them up. But if you do it beforehand inevitably you'll find there's some discrepancy in the measurements and it's going to be tough getting the other piece in. Now the standoff that supports our top cover that can go on there. That's the one that, that screw, the uh, pinhead, pinhole screw goes in there. And I just use the back of my scalpel blade as a screwdriver to get into the slots of that because it's wider than my screwdriver. Okay, all so far so good. I think next. The lock and release levers need to be fitted. So, taking a bit of molybdenum paste, or you could use something else if that's what you had. I'm just going to lubricate the holes in the casting at the bottom, and down that lip there where the spring on the release lever runs, likewise the holes in the casting at the top. That those two shafts run through. I've got the lock lever here. That drops down into here. Support that from underneath with my finger. Put its return spring on the top. There are two return springs that look quite similar. The finer return spring with fewer turns is for the lock lever. The other one is for the release lever. If you mix them up, as usual, things don't go well. I'll fit that C clip. I usually just position that, push it into place with my tweezers. Check that that moves freely. That all looks good. Where's the release lever here? and its spring, which I carefully took off prior to cleaning. Now I've got to get it back on. I've got to get it hooked, the hook underneath there, the, the ring around the boss on the lever, and that's all done. That drops in here. Be careful of the spring, don't let it get trapped over the edge of the body like that. If you press on it when it's trapped over the edge of the body, it'll get bent and then it won't move as it's intended to move. So I'll put its return spring on there, which was the one that was longer and had more coils than the one we just fitted to the lock lever. Getting the screw in the top of the shaft is sometimes awkward. The shaft is split at the top to provide some friction on the screw so you can use that to adjust the length of the screw, the effective length of the screw. I'll just wind that down a bit, that feels good. That's that little one out of the way. Now I think the film advance shaft could just about go into the body at this stage. There's our lock and release levers at the bottom. And here's the film advance shaft. Normally I like to lubricate the bush on this with graphite grease. I've got some new graphite grease to try so I'm going to do that to use that today and see how it goes. I haven't used this lot yet. It's quite different in consistency to what I've used previously. 
so I'm unsure as to how well it will work. I'm rubbing some into that spring so that that spring will be well lubricated and the coils of the spring will run over each other smoothly when this rotates. I just need to make sure that the grease gets down between the bush and the shaft. This grease is not as tacky as the stuff I've used previously. I'm not sure how well it will go. I have my take-up spool. I'll put the metal bush in the base of the take-up spool. That goes in the round hole. It doesn't go in the hole with the slot. Metal bush down in the back of the camera. Let's look at my film advance shaft. I'm going to apply some synthetic grease to the cam surfaces on this. Because this is all very clean and dry and free from lubricant at the moment. After being cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner and I could probably use that graphite grease for doing this job just as well and the lever I want I want to drop this in and I've got to pick my spot I want a, a turn and a third of pretension on this when I assemble the film advance because I know from experience that's a good amount to have on a retina reflex. Normally you want a turn of pretension with retinas, the folding retinas. There are more components in the reflexes and there's more friction involved in it. And a little bit of extra spring tension helps make sure that the, re the film advance lever returns to the rest position against the body. Each time without any argument. Now that screw doesn't want to go in. That's it, it's running in now. That was a perfect example of what happens if you tighten one of the screws up before you get everything seated. The holes were not quite lined up there. Now all the screws are present, I can tighten those three screws. And that lever's in place. That, at the top, I want to assemble the clutch assembly and I have that here in three pieces and I'm going to use the graphite grease again.